What's up guys, John Bird III here, and we're back again for another video. Today's video, we're gonna talk about my top five, maybe six, baits that I throw. You can go anywhere in the country and use these for the shad spawn. So we're gonna jump right into it. One of the first baits we're gonna talk about is a buzz bait. So right here, this is the tour grade skipping buzz. Andy Montgomery designed this. This bait is designed and it works very well for skipping under dots, under lay downs and stuff like that. And then one thing I want to show you with this bait, you see the little wire keeper right here. And so that helps the bait be able to skip really, really well. And so that's one thing I like about this bait. And you can put a toad on it or you can put, this is a, I want to say a four and a quarter rage swimmer. So um, in the Carolina Chrome. So that works well on Lake Murray because you know we got blueback heron out here. So this is a bait that's also works well. You can throw it around grass. So if, if you got some of those fish hiding up under those grass and you, the, the grass tend to hold a lot of shad, you can throw this buzz bait right along the side of that thing and the big ones will come and just freaking grab this thing. So make sure you got the right setup for this right here, but also make sure you got a buzz bait tied on. Second bait kind of goes hand in hand with this and that is the frog. So this frog right here, this is the all new mock popping frog. And so you may see on the top that it's green, but the top of the frog really doesn't matter. You always wanna look at the bottom of the frog because that is what the fish sees because the fish is looking up. And so as the popping of the mouth, the little popping mouth creates all the disturbance and they see it walking, they only see this white belly. So the top part of the frog doesn't really matter in my opinion. So again, you can throw this up on the grass, you can throw it in lay downs, because I've been way up the river on Lake Murray and I've thrown the frog inside the center of the lay downs and the fish just come up out of there and just grab it. So this is a good frog to throw around again, grass, lay downs, anything where you think that the shad will be. So make sure you got a frog tied on because this is a great bait to throw also doing the shad spawn. You can also, if you got the walking one, you can walk it on alongside of the dock. So that works great as well. My third bait that we're gonna talk about is the bladed jig. So here, got the Strike King Thunder Cricket, just a white one with the Carolina Chrome blade, blade minnow. And so that chrome on the blade minnow really, really sticks out, as well as the white on the bladed jig on the Thunder Cricket here. So you, you can skip this up under dots as well, and then also bring it down the side. And so this right here, y'all know I tend to throw a rage bug. But if I'm not fishing around any type laydowns, I will throw the blade minnow. But if I know I'm gonna be skipping on the docks or around laydowns, I'll put a white rage bug on it. Or there's one that's it's like white, kind of pearlish white with a translucent chrome belly on it. I forget the specific color of that rage bug, but I'll tie that on if I know I'm gonna be around some heavy cover. That way I ain't gotta worry about it rolling. But this is a great option to throw anytime you're, lit. like I said, you're going down the bank because normally that shad spawn is gonna be going down the bank or it's gonna be up on points. And so if you got grass on those points, this is great to throw. Even if you got some rock um, up on the point, you throw this thing up there because I've got bitten out here on some different points right here, just throwing this up even on some rocky points as well. So make sure you got a bladed jig tied on. And then of course, if you get bit up on that, you got that stout hook, you can set the hook and you can drag them into the boat. And so that's another thing that I love about this. And so the tungsten thunder cricket, which this one specifically is, it has the wire tied skirt. So if you, when you're skipping this bait, you don't really have to worry about whether or not like the skirt's gonna start slipping down or whatever because it's wire tied. So make sure you got a tungsten thunder cricket simply because for one, the wire tied skirt, and then since it's tungsten, it has a smaller head. So if you're throwing a half ounce, it's not as big. And so, but when you got the tungsten, like I said, smaller head, smaller diameter, you can go up to like a half ounce. And then when you got the three eighth ounce size, it's very, very small. So either one, whichever one is your go-to size, make sure you use that as well. But again, make sure you got Thunder Cricket, some form of bladed jig, whichever one is your favorite, make sure you got that tied on. So the next two baits, they're gonna kind of go tie really, really close together. And I'm gonna kind of explain to you why I chose these particular baits. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is of course the 1.5. So this 1.5 right here is in Chrome Sexy Shad. And so this is another great bait profile and especially the Chrome. And so when you're throwing this up on points and stuff like that, it's gonna work very, very well. And so make sure you got either Chrome or you can get like, there's another one, it's, it's, I think it's, I 
I think I forget this specific color. I think it's Ghost Sexy Shad or something like that, where it's translucent. So this chrome color look, works really, really well up on those points. So on Lake Murray, we have a lot of those blueback herring and stuff like that, as I mentioned before, and they get up on the real red shallow point. So the 1.5 dives, two to five foot. And then if you can vary your line diameter or keep your rod tip up high, you won't really necessarily have to worry about it bogging down, especially if you get up on that slimy grass. But if you got one of those hard bottom areas, you can literally like crank those areas really, really hard. And then with the square beard has the really erratic action and it'll bounce up off those rocks and stuff like that, which will help trigger those bites. Because the shad spawn and even the blueback herring spawn, a lot of that happens around on points and around rock. And if you get up shallow enough, you can actually see the blueback herring just literally just swimming all along the bank where the uh, rip rat walls are. And so make sure you got to have a 1.5 anytime the blueback herring or just the regular old shad spawn is going on. Because a 1.5 is a staple in my opinion. And anytime you're talking about some form of shad spawn, blueback herring, whatever. And it work, tends to work very, very well. So make sure you got a 1.5 tied on. But another sleeper option that a lot of people don't throw is the hybrid hunter, which y'all know this is one of my favorite baits. So this color right here is Sexy Shad 2.0, same rules apply. But the one thing I like about the hybrid hunter a little bit more than the traditional 1.5, the hybrid hunter has that real wide wobble, especially if you throw the big one. It has that real wide wobble. So again, it also will help increase your bite. So make sure you tie on a hybrid hunter. This is the junior size, but again, you can throw the full size and it'll work just fine. And then, like I said, this, this is new Sexy Shad 2.0 color pattern, works great. So make sure you got one of those tied on as well. The last two, and this one, I'm gonna I'm a say the best one for last. Let me make sure I don't give y'all a sneak peek. But this one right here, Sexy Dog, this is the hard knock, and this is in the natural shad pattern. And one thing about the hard knock is it has that one tungsten knocker in there, so it actually makes the bait a little bit quieter compared to your traditional sexy doll because the sexy doll has the little bit, the regular sexy doll has the little BBs in there. And so when you got them BBs in there, it tends to be a lot more high pitch and louder because there's more of them in there. Whereas you have just a thud sound, which makes it a little bit more subtle. So a sexy dog is always great to get up on the points and to start walking and stuff like that. Walking alongside dock posts, alongside the docks, along the rip rat wall. You gotta have a sexy dog tied on because I mean, it works great. And the last bait we're gonna talk about is one that you don't really hear about a whole lot. That is the mock shad right there. And that's the 120 size. So this is the big brother to the traditional mock shad, the 90 one. And this color right here is no cap chrome. So shad spawn, and we ain't got time to be capping with them. Make sure you got no cap chrome, mock shad, the 120 size. Because this big one right here, they're gonna go and they're gonna chase after this because they want, you gotta think about it. The shad spawn is normally right after the bass spawn. And so they're trying to eat to, to just gain back that weight from all the weight that they lost during the traditional spawn. And so when you throw this bigger one right here, you don't have to worry about, it's not your big six inch style swim baits as you've seen many other people throw, but it's very, it's small, but it's just the right size in my opinion. And so you throw this, again, along them rip rat wall, alongside docks, alongside anything where you think shad will be, even along grass lines, they'll come out, they'll come and grab this thing. And like I said, it'll work perfect. So make sure you got a mock shad tied on the 120 one. Now, also, let me mention this. The 120 size is a half ounce, so it's actually heavier. So it's easier to throw. It's easier for you to make those roll casts real tight up alongside those docks and stuff like that. So make sure you got a mock shad, the 120 size. The smaller size, I, I don't know the actual, I think it might be a quarter, but it's small. And so you gotta, you, it, you will probably be better off trying to throw it on a spinning rod. But this right here, you can throw it on a bait caster, 15 pound line. You can do like a medium heavy mod fast action for this bait right here. And so it'll work great, like I said. So anywhere where you think there's gonna be shad, make sure you tie on like a mock shad. And then you can actually, you can kind of burn it a little bit faster and it'll sit up high and it actually create like a weight, like a weight bait. And so this is another great option that you can tie on as well. So that's it for today's video. I'm literally about to go home, just got off the water. Been out here pretty much since lunchtime. So I've been out here about seven hours or so. And I only had, it was, it was kind of tough for me today. I only had a couple bites. I caught one on the 1.5. I caught a giant catfish and I caught a striper. 
And so the Bash right now, they're in this weird phase to where they are getting back into those post-spawn areas, which would be the same areas as your pre-spawn. And then we also got a Shad spawn and the Harry spawn about to start or just barely starting. So that's why I had these baits tied on. So they're in that weird phase, I guess you could say. And then we had a thunderstorm come through as well. So it kind of had a fish in a weird little funk. But, I mean, anytime you get on the water, it's a great day. Make sure you like this video, share this video with somebody trying to find the right bait to throw doing the Shad spawn. I'm JB3. I got to get back to living the dream. I'll catch you later. <laughs>